I never wanted to go to HBCU. Mm-hmm. So um, I was real sleep back in the day. I was not woke at all. <laughs> So I wanted to go to a PWI because mm. society conditions us to think that PWIs are better. Thank you for tuning in to sit on this with a Paris. About to get lit with these topics. Drop your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for the love and good time. Forget to like, comment, subscribe. Without further ado, I bring to you this for you. What's up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Sip On This. We're just going to jump right into it. This is episode 10, so uh, we're going to start off with a celebratory shot due to the fact that, A, this is, again, episode 10, so you know I had to bring the dog, the original, that came through first episode. Y'all know me by now. We is cousins. <laughs> Y'all know me. I was about to say... Uh, I'm not introducing myself no more. Okay. They, they know me at this point. Uh, well, period. So, <laughs> with that being said, this is to... Uh, Success thus far and success in the future. Do you have anything you want to toast up to, sis? Just the podcast. I think it's been it's been going. Well. Yeah, the love and support has been like kind of crazy. Yeah, I really didn't it. think like people literally have been DMing me like, "Yo, you got to keep doing this. Like, this is lit." So shout out to you guys. One, two, three. All right, so now to get into today's topic, um, this was actually something that I saw on TikTok. That's why the idea came up for today's episode. And you'll, if you know who this is to my right, <laughs> you'll know I, there was nobody else that needed to do today's episode. We have to tell the backstory. <laughs> yeah, we'll tell the backstory, but I'm going to tell you guys why um, I thought of the topic, then we'll get to the backstory. So on TikTok, um, this girl was talking about how at her job, I can't remember why the topic came up, but they had a conversation with her manager, I think. Mm -hmm. And um, somehow word got out that people of color, um, more specifically, I'm pretty sure all people of color have to do this, but more specifically black people, um, code switch. Mm -hmm. And she was just like, code switch? Like, why do you guys... Like, first off, she had no idea what code switch meant whatsoever, mm -hmm. had no inkling to the meaning whatsoever. Then, too, she was like, once they told her, they were just like, why? She was just like, why do you guys feel the need to do that? And then she even, I guess, asked them if they had to do that at school. And the girl said, yeah, I went to a PWI. Mm -hmm. So, absolutely, I code switched depending on what setting I was around school. So, I figured... Uh, we would talk about PWIs versus HBCUs. And you see, clearly you see who went to the HBCU. And no, <laughs> unfortunately, uh, I'm not going to lie. I didn't even attempt to look for my uh, PWI apparel because most of my apparel was actually from like fall and winter stuff because mm -hmm. I wore a lot of sweatsuits. You know, something else that we'll probably dig into is the attire difference, like how we dress going to class <laughs> opposed to how you guys basically dress going to class. Mm -hmm. We dress down a lot, so I had a lot more sweatsuits and things of that nature. But anyway, um, so to kick things off, I wanted to start out by saying, why did you end up at a HBCU? And then what made you continue your education by still going back to another HBCU? <laughs> okay. So, I'm going to be real, real honest. Because oh, wait. You know what? Y'all, we're doing a lot. We got to talk about your bad story first. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> so, um, 2019, we went to Costa Rica. It was a big group of us or mm -hmm. whatever. And the people that we hang around, I'm like basically the only person that went to HBCU. Like, everybody else went to PWIs. We had one other person. Who, Devontae? Devontae yeah. okay. from the other episode he went to. So, yeah. So... I don't even know if he had a stance on this. I probably had a stance for the both of us <laughs> during this incident. But so we somehow end up on a trip talking about PWIs and HBCUs. Mm -hmm. And when I tell you I was advocating and going hard for she my HBCUs. She was triggered. Big it trigger. It was nobody. Absolutely no one. <laughs> Y'all not finna talk about HBCU. <laughs> But for the record, nobody, nobody said, said anything. It was no, nobody. 
It was the tequila. That's what it was. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> it is so. We still talk about that to, to this, this day. day. <laughs> to this day. <laughs> like you went so. Like I you went, went pure ape shit. Let's just call a spade a spade. You snapped. They should put me on the roster at this point. Like, honestly, on, on the payroll. Honestly, I should, I should be on their payroll. <laughs> you need to work for the admissions office or something. You need to work at the. Um, you know when they do orientation, yes. you need to be the keynote I speaker. I need to give the tours. I need to. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but anyway, so that was the background story as far as why anyone that knows her that was uh, especially on that trip is like, oh, yeah, there's nobody else <laughs> capable of speaking to this topic outside of the keynote speaker for HBCUs <laughs> herself. I so, just, I felt like, I felt like I was outnumbered. The tequila had got a hold of me and it was. <laughs> but I don't even remember don't the topic the being brought started. up. Like, I don't. I don't I have no, I have no idea. But anyway, as you were, sis. <laughs> so, so I'm going to go ahead and be honest um, because I feel like you can change your opinions and mm. stuff with new information and maturity right. or whatever. I never wanted to go to HBCU. Mm-hmm. So um, I was real sleep back in the day. I was not woke <laughs> at all. So I wanted to go to a PWI because mm. society conditions us to think that PWIs are better right. or that they will bring you more success or whatever right. the case may be. So, 12th grade, I got accepted into Campbell University, which is a PWI. I decided I was going to go there. Um, I did the orientation and all that. However, my Life parents, came at you fast. No, it came at my parents fast. Because <laughs> they got that first private school um, tuition bill. And they said, oh, no, you got to pick something else. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, it's mid-July at right. this point. I what am I that. supposed to do? So my mom went to Fayetteville State, so I was like, okay, well, I guess I'll just apply there. Like, I mean, it's mid-July at this point, and I got to go somewhere. So I applied to Fayetteville State, got in, and that's how I got to HBCU. And, of course, as soon as I got there, my opinions and all that changed. Mm -hmm. Um, So I – and then fast forward to me going to law school, I only applied to Central's law school. It was Central or nothing. Oh, wow. I didn't know that either. I applied to one law school, and if I wasn't going to Central, I wasn't going anywhere. Oh, wow. (laughs) Damn. (laughs) So, I mean – Why – why – Central specifically, because other HBCUs have law schools too, right? But I know they're known for their law too, though. Is Mm -hmm. that why? Yeah. So not only do they have a a good um, law school, but of course, it's I mean, it's in the area. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it is. I could have applied to Howard, but that kind of would have been kind of a crazy move at the time. Yeah, true. So yeah, so it was it was Central or nothing. I didn't want to go to Duke. I didn't want to go to UNC. Yeah. Campbell, none of it. It was <laughs> it was central or nothing. Yeah. Um, so to dive into my little journey or whatever, so like she you basically hit the nail on the head because society kind of conditions us uh to feel as though PWIs equate to success basically like you're a better education yeah and so with that being said i too well no i was about to lie i actually did apply to an hbcu i applied to a and t but i actually had no intentions of going to a and t i just did that to appease my mom Mm -hmm. to be honest like um um, and then (laughs) it's funny because so for those that don't know my youngest sister is actually a senior she actually graduates in june which makes me feel really old (sighs) like super old so then um she's actually going to a&t but prior to going to a&t and like well choosing a&t as the official school of her choice or whatever she had gotten uh, accepted to all sorts of other universities but like you she only applied to hbcus Mm -hmm. and um it's just interesting me and my dad talk about the fact that how kids come up nowadays opposed to us coming up it's just like way different because like you said we were sleep back in the day when i tell you i was in the bed in the bed (laughs) no alarm clock (laughs) like (laughs) like just just living and well, like, I think, I think the crazy part to me is, I was I was dead sleep knocked out, but both of my parents are HBCU graduates, and I'm like, where was y'all antennas? Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, hey, I mean, their generation is different. Like, I mean, like I right. said, but right. I mean, I don't feel like we ever really had those conversations. No. And my dad used to work at Shaw. Like when I tell you. I was basically at Shaw when I was in elementary school. <laughs> That's crazy. I used to be at Shaw all the time. Every event, 
everything. I used to be at Shaw all the time with my dad. I did not know that. And I did not want to go to go to an HBCU. I feel like I'm the type of person like I need the conversation to be had. Yeah. Like I mean, I'm, yeah. I can see it. I'm there, but I feel like I need the conversation. Yeah. And I don't feel like I ever had it. So yeah. I'm just believing what society puts on yeah. us. Yeah. And I'm just going with it. Yeah, and the only reason why so. Again, to give a little bit more of my background, so neither one of my parents, um, well, my dad never attended college, and then my mom only went briefly, and again, due to the tuition, had to drop out. So, um, my my, although my uh, mom is from out of state or whatever, so a lot of my family, though, went to state, and so I was just like, oh, everyone else went to state. They say all these great things about it. Maybe I should just apply to state, Mm -hmm. and they were like my number one, and then my younger, uh, I was about to say younger sister. What a lie. My older (laughs) sister, um, my older sister um, went to ECU. We're two years apart, so when I was a senior, she was a, a sophomore. I think that's how that works. Yeah, she was a sophomore, And um, she was, me and my sister have a lot of similarities, but a lot of differences at the time, uh, the same time, because she is more like a, uh, what's the word for it? Like, I would actually go as far to say that she low key, well, used to have kind of like separation anxiety. Mm -hmm. Anytime we were away from home for a certain period of time, she would be like, can we go back home? (laughs) Like, for instance, like, so our family is um, divided between like down south and up north. So. For part of the summers, I will always go to South Carolina for part of the summer and then come back and go to New York for the other part of the summer. And we would be in New York, and the rule was whenever you rise, uh, guys are ready to come back home, just call us, and we'll come back up and get you. My sister will always be like, Adam, I want to go home. Brett, we've been here for three days. <laughs> Come get me They're right not now. coming to get us in three days. That that car ride is real. Like We're not going back down to North right. Carolina after three days. So. Right. Uh, for that reason, she used to get homesick a lot, even though she went to ECU, which is like an hour and like 15 minutes away. And so my parents were just like, you know, we feel like you're not giving you a chance to get the true college experience because you're always either coming back here or my dad's side of the family is closer to ECU. So when she wanted that taste of home, she just used to go visit, you know, the family on that mm-hmm. side. But for me, I didn't care where I went. It was known, like, I'm going to be good wherever I go. I don't get homesick. Mm -hmm. You don't uh, even like being at home. No, I hate being, oh, my, heavy on the hate. (laughs) (laughs) But but, um, I only applied to ECU because of her. She was just like, please apply. Like, um, I'll feel much better if you came down here with me and da-da-da-da-da. And I'm like, fine. So I got my mom telling me. Apply to A&T, my sister telling me to apply to ECU, and then I threw out NC State. And what happened was I had a black guidance counselor, right, my last two years in school. Because for anyone else that knows me, I went to quite a few high schools. So the last two years I was in high school, I had a black guidance counselor, and he was like, look, he was like, I understand you want to go to state. He went to ECU. Mm-hmm. And he was like, I really feel like you'll like the experience there more, whatever, whatever. Granted, I'm being biased, but that's just my biased opinion just to be real with you. So I'm like, okay, whatever. So then my mom actually used to work at state's uh, financial aid office. Mm -hmm. She actually used to be a supervisor. Right. So my mom was just like, oh, you'll get in the state. No problem because of my GPA and my SAT score. She was like, oh, you're set. So my mom was like, just uh, go ahead and do the early like application or early admission or whatever it's called. I can't remember. Sorry. So uh, I told my guidance counselor when I was about to apply. He said no. He said because they want although your stuff is solid, they want like the top of the top of the class, like the valedictorian type of people to apply or whatever. And my mom was just like, just do it anyway. Why apply? And it backfired. I didn't get in. Mm. And honestly, I was just like, how dare they? Like, do they not know me? But I feel like everything happens for a reason because when I um, actually toured the school literally weeks before I got my letter saying I didn't make it in, me and your brother actually went to tour the school and both of us was like, this is the ghetto. (laughs) Like, no shade to state. This is back in, like, 08. So I'm sure they've done quite a few updates since then. Mm -hmm. But for that time that we were looking at schools, I was like, yo, like, 
I don't like their campus like that. I don't like the rooms. I was like, and the people, because you know you meet the people too during the open house mm-hmm. um, situations or whatever. So I'm just like, the people seem weird. Like I don't, <laughs> I just don't. It was something about that school that I just it wasn't for me. But a couple weeks later, I went and visited Green. Um, I was about to say Greenville. Greenville and ECU are two completely different places. Although ECU is in Greenville, and if you know, you know. So. <laughs> When I went to visit ECU, I was like, oh, this is lit. The rooms were nice. The people was lit. The food was lit. I was like, granted, I'm going to get into that in a minute, too, um, because that was a lot of smoke and mirrors, which we'll get into in a second. But still, I was like, I really felt like that was the spot for me. And I was like, I looked at my sister and I was like, I don't understand why you're coming home so much, because just for me visiting in the hours that I was here, I would never come home. Right. So I ended up clearly getting into ECU. That's how I ended up going. But... Yeah, so I didn't really get put on to the HBCU stuff until I was visiting you and my brother down there so often. And I was like, dang, it is lit down here. But but the funny thing is, when you went to ECU, I just knew that's where I was going. I was going to go, too. But mm-hmm. I, never, I never applied because I think they had... Um, I think I didn't want to play that application fee. I think that's, that's what. It yeah, was. I remember that. I, so I you was were like, childish. right? Because you, by the time it was time for me to come, you had been there for what two years yeah, already. Two years. So I just, I just knew I was going to ECU. Yeah, and we I was remember gonna that. Go together. I remember that. But I was like, but that application fee. So I'm gonna go over here over to the free people. <laughs> I'm gonna go over here to the free. And I'm apply here, you know, make some shake over there. Yeah. But yeah, I just knew I was going to ECU too. Yeah. <laughs> I remember when. Uh, I rem- it's funny to think back though because I remember when you hit me up you said so I'm not going to Campbell no more and I was like bro school's starting in a couple weeks what do you mean you're not going to Campbell anymore right. and you were just like yeah my parents got that bill and was like no ma'am you gotta <laughs> you gotta back scale a little bit choose uh, choose somewhere else and I knew I was like bro where are you going <laughs> and the thing is because okay back then I was on the fence about whether I wanted to go to law school mm-hmm and Campbell has a, a good pre-law program yeah. and they have a law school so I felt like I was going to go all the way through if yeah. that's what I wanted to do and my parents said well if you're not sure no <laughs> we're not even going to do it they made the decision for you Absolutely. basically they said if you're not sure we're not going to do it <laughs> luckily I went through yeah. Fayetteville State and through Central so excuse me but okay so what do you feel like you gained from your experience at an HBCU that you feel like a PWI could never give you. It's just the community for me. The sense I of community. I guess, um, I think I saw a post and it was just kind of like, go to a HBCU, you have your whole life to be a minority. Like, you got your whole Yo, entire I life remember to that be a too. minority. Yeah. So, go somewhere where you are around people like you, where mm-hmm. you can embrace. And granted, just because most, and of course, HBCUs oh, have other r- ethnicities and races as well, mm-hmm. but just because everyone looks like you, doesn't mean they have the same life experiences as you. Because I've met so many different people that are not like me. We come from different backgrounds and mm-hmm. different areas of life. Mm-hmm. Um, so I definitely think it's the community. Like, um, of course, last year homecoming was canceled. Mm-hmm. But 2019, I went back to homecoming after not going for five years. Mm-hmm. And I felt right at home. Like, yeah. it was like, dang, like, this was the best time of my life, yeah. honestly. Um, and that's what I gained from Fayetteville State. I think... Um, at Fayetteville State, it was really the community, like the family, like the people that I met there mm-hmm. are going to be in my wedding. Mm-hmm. Like those, those are my folks. Yeah. <laughs> um, but at Central, I think I gained. Um, I, I don't know how to explain it, but okay, I worked for a black-owned law firm, and all of the attorneys, including me, went to Central. Oh, and wow. so I find that just the connection of being a Central Law graduate. Like, people are willing to help. They're mm-hmm. like, oh, okay. Like, oh, I'll put your name through here. Oh, mm-hmm. she went to Central. Like, I, I don't know if y'all have that or not. Because, I, I mean, look at how many people come through the PWIs and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh, you went to, okay, go Pirates or right. <laughs> whatever. But I feel like, like, Central, like, we, yeah. we be riding for our folks. For <laughs> real. Um, like, I even interned for a judge. Um, I interned for a judge while I was in law school. And she went to Central, and she said that she only takes interns from Central, and she's oh, wow. gonna she's gonna keep doing it until somebody check her on it. <laughs> she said because she said each one reach one, and we got to bring our people up. Like, hey, I like that. Like, though. and that's that's, that's been real. my experience from Central specifically. 
Um, and I know that's not everybody's experience, but mm-hmm. from what I've seen, like the attorneys that I work with, like they're always down to help me. Mm-hmm. I mean, they know I'm a new lawyer at the end of the day. They've mm-hmm. got 20 plus years in the game. So they're right. always, always down to help me. And I, I'm not saying that I wouldn't have gotten a job had I gone to another law school, mm-hmm. but the fact that I went to Central, like, we family. <laughs> so that's, so essentially I gained family from both HBCUs. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I well, like uh, I don't have a great answer the way my good sis over here does. I mean, but I think the y'all have a, a little, a black community. But within. that's, okay, so... Actually, that is the way that I was going to answer to in an offbeat way. So the community that they were able to have at um, FSU or it it sounds like in general, the HBCU experience is like you just necessarily like have a family type of connection with those that you connect with during your time there. Mm -hmm. Whereas at PWIs, again, I can only speak for my experience. Um, after speaking with some other friends of ours that we went to, well, that I went to school with, it felt like we went to a HBCU only because the main reason most of us is one of two reasons why I feel like most people choose PWIs if you're a person of color. It's because society teaches you that the education from a PWI is greater than that that you'll get from a HBCU. And then the other side to that is, um, how do I put this in a word? So basically, if you went to public school, you're used to being in a diverse crowd, like being all races, right? Mm-hmm. So it's just like, I can't put myself back to when I was like in that 17, 18 year old mindset. I was just like, I don't want to be around people that look just like me. I want to continue being around diversity because once you get out of an HBCU, and get back out into the real world, I felt like you were going to have to readjust to what the real world was like outside of that institution that you went to or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. But what I realized when I actually went to a PWI is I didn't really mingle with other races. I stick to my people. So I was just like, I remember, and this is so crazy. So again, uh, when I first went to ECU, um, when it was time to select your dorms, my mom recommended she was like you know maybe you should do this i cannot remember the technical term for it but i think it was like first year experience like it was only a freshman um like program or whatever and it was only two dorms on campus that did it Mm -hmm. um for those that um you know know anything about ecu so the campus is divided into three sections it's west end central campus and um college hill which is just termed the hill when you actually go there so like one dorm is on um, the west end side of campus and the other dorm that participates in the program is on the hill. So when I talked to my sister to see if she did it, she was like, no, I didn't do that or whatever. And like, I adjusted just fine or whatever. And my mom was like, well, you can't base your experience off of your sisters. You need to get out there and do something different, whatever, whatever. Again, pulling my arm, telling me to do something different. So I was like, fine, oh my gosh, like I'll do it. When I tell you I hated it, <laughs> I didn't even last like two months. So what exactly was it? What- so what it is, is like basically the first year experience is like you do, they have like a lot of different programs that you can sign up for and attend and to actually stay like um, continue to stay in a dorm. Uh, they take attendance, I believe, and they make sure that you have to attend so many programs within a certain amount of time. I can't mm-hmm. remember if it was like a weekly basis or like a monthly basis. I just knew So it's funny, too, because growing up, my older sister was always like, you're the rebellious one out of all of us or whatever. And I'm like, I feel like you're the rebellious one. I can honestly say when I got to college, that rebellious side jumped out because I was like, I don't want to feel obligated to have to attend programs on top of adjusting to like a new school schedule Mm -hmm. and like all that stuff. I was just like. Why did I let my mom talk me into this? (laughs) (laughs) I mean, no harm, no shame on if you watch this. But I was just like. I really shouldn't have done that. But I feel like another reason why my experience wasn't the greatest with the first year thing is because of the dorm I stayed in. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to tell you the difference between staying on the side of campus that I stayed on initially versus where I ended up. So again, like I said, where the other dorm was, was on the hill. Well, as if, uh, 
clearly it's called College Hill and we nicknamed it the Hill because I mean honestly black people gave it that name they gave it that nickname or whatever they just mm-hmm. cut it in half no we're not gonna say I say on College Hill no I say on the Hill mm-hmm. so when my sister went to school she was like um, you need to stay on the Hill honestly that's where all the black people and like that's where it's more diverse because all the other parts of campus is pretty much all white people. Mm-hmm. And she was like, and if you're anything like me, it's going to be an adjustment that you're not willing to adjust to. And I'm just like, girl, whatever. Like, yeah. I can I can get along with just about anybody. So I thought I got to that um, dorm and when I tell you, it was just <laughs> it was just so one incident, one of the first incidents that happened while I was there. So actually that story so I didn't know anybody to room with prior to going mm-hmm. so I was just like all right I'm just rolling the dice whoever I get I get and hopefully we get along well the dude that was assigned to be my roommate was actually from Long Island which is where my family is from so I'm like oh like something in common to build off of like cool well we met and I was like, okay, he seems like, okay, you can tell he was a little socially awkward, nothing I can't get past, cool. Well, then outside of that, the people in that dorm were nuts. <laughs> like, bruh. So these people he was cool with at the time, one of the first nights we were in the dorm, it had to be one of the first weekends we were there. It was like three in the morning. Both of us are knocked out in the bed sleep. And all of a sudden we hear... Uh, these kids coming down the hallway and they're arguing. Mm -hmm. So it got so bad that they started throwing hands. (laughs) And I wake up and like the way that our room was uh, set up, like we had the big roll closets, like the roll away closets, like one for each of us. Mine was up against the wall and I felt like the fight happened on the opposite side of the wall and they were throwing hands to the point that I thought they were going to fall through the wall into my closet (laughs) and be in the bed with me. (laughs) And my nosy ass at this point, I done got up to look through the peak hole and it's legit my roommates, people. I'm like, yo, your people out here beating each other ass. Like, what the (laughs) hell? And he's like, yeah, that's not my business. (laughs) Like, he he was just like, yeah, that's not my scene. I'm going back to sleep. (laughs) So... They're fighting, and then the next morning, I see them at breakfast, like, then shit happened. They okay. just tussled for that good 10-minute span and was like, all right, we besties again, like, whatever. That was a funny story, but then the moment, this next one is why I was like, no, nah, this ain't for me. I got to go. We had, like, a Taco Tuesday, mm-hmm. and that story, majority of our cleaning crew or whatever in that particular dorm were basically black people, older black people at that, mm-hmm. like grandparents' age. Mm-hmm. So this particular Taco Tuesday, I'm waiting for the bus to go visit my homeboy off campus. So I'm sitting in my room just waiting to um, the time is, you know, for the bus to show up or whatever. And I'm listening to music, but I hear, like, a lot of stuff going on outside of my headphones. So I take off my headphones, and it sounds like it's another fight in the hallway. Again, it's Tuesday, 2 o'clock. What are y'all throwing hands about? So by the time I actually looked to see what happened, I opened my door. The coast was clear. Nobody was in the hallway. But, bro, it was was like, I would say with the amount of food that was in the hallway— it had to be anywhere from like ten to fifteen people that had like a food fight. Oh yeah, I remember you talking about that. They smear. They didn't just throw the food. That was part of the issue. <clears throat> Excuse me. They smeared all their like taco meat, their salsa. They smeared it all over the floors, the walls, everything. And right when I step out my room, I look at the end of the hallway, and it's the elderly cleaning crew sitting there like damn, man, we got to clean all this shit up. I said, yeah, these white people got me fucked up. <laughs> I said, and I was the only black person on that side because the way that the dorm was set up, it was only three floors, I think. The first floor was female. Second floor was male. Third floor was female. And, like, again, on that side of the floor, I was the only, like, black person. So mm-hmm. I'm like, I can't fight all these white people. <laughs> But, like, I really feel a way. So, I think it's best for me to just remove myself from this situation. So, I applied for a room change. I said, yeah, you need to put me with my folks. So, I moved <laughs> right. to the hill. And it, and if you lived on the hill between, I would say, 08 to, like, 2014, it was the projects. Like, our buildings really were high-rise, like, project buildings. Mm-hmm. But now, if you go back, it didn't, it was gentrified as shit. I went right. back in January and... Me and Shaniqua, the therapist from my uh, first uh, session of the mental health episode, we went riding through visiting another friend back in January for her birthday. And we was just like, 
bro, this school looks completely different. Mm -hmm. Like, it legit looked like a school we were visiting for the first time. Because even, this is how gentrified Greenville is. Like, when you first used to get, (laughs) when you first used to get in Greenville, it was nothing but projects. Mm -hmm. And you had to ride through the projects to get to the school. So, a lot of people from um, out of state that had never visited, they just applied, got in and was like, well, we'll just do um, orientation like the week of mm-hmm. when school starts. They got got there and was like, wait a minute. Right. So I'm living in the projects. Oh, this is get, right. This <laughs> is ghetto. But that. now they wipe all the projects out. They actually mm-hmm. build a bridge that takes you over the old projects. Like they were never there. It's crazy. But anyway, back to my experience. So like I really only, I don't, uh, thinking back, I might as well have went to an HBCU because I didn't really associate with too many other people outside of my own race. You did. Not that I, not that I wasn't open to it. It just felt like my folks. Like, right. I mean, I feel like that's usually how it is. People cling to, especially if you're in a new situation, mm-hmm. you've never done this before. So you're going to naturally gravitate towards people yeah. that you may have similar experiences yeah. with. So yeah, cause you, you didn't hang with no white people. I met all the black people I know from ECU yeah. from, from visiting you. <laughs> yeah. I don't know a single white person from ECU. <laughs> so, um, I was cool with no, th- you won't. no, I was I was cool with three people that were white from ECU. One was my roommate. Never uh, heard I, of these I, folks. I talked about him briefly in one of my previous episodes because th- and I'm telling you, freshman year, I got slapped in the face with so many new experiences or whatever because for one, like having to live with someone opposite of your race and then living on the side of campus that was predominantly white and then going to a side of campus that was more diverse, but my roommate was white and he was gay. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, okay, wait a minute. Like, this is a lot having to deal with this. But honestly, he was one of my favorite roommates I had. Mm -hmm. Like, we never had... And, like, what I appreciated most out of him, though, he really, like, when I say, like, he really had to, like... I would say he kind of, like, told me about myself without telling me about myself. Mm -hmm. Because, like, what I respect about him is... Uh, right after we met, I was just like, damn, like, clearly I'm not so comfortable living with someone, you know, gay, like, whatever, Mm -hmm. whatever. And he texted me. He was like, so look, evidently you're straight. I can tell. He was like, "Uh, but I don't know what stereotypes you hear about gay people. He was just like, but just because I'm gay does not mean I want you. He was just like, just like you demand respect, I demand respect as well. And this is how I feel like we need to do to come together to like get along for the sake of living together. And I appreciated him for that conversation because had he not just told me what the situation was, we probably would have never talked or eventually had the relationship that we had or whatever. Because like when I tell you this dude was hilarious, (laughs) (laughs) like I have so many stories with this dude. Like he was literally like just a hot damn mess, but in a good way. So, like, honestly, living with him also changed my perspective of, like, the the gay community, too, honestly. Yeah. So, like, because I can actually admit that, like, just, again, growing up, especially being in our culture or whatever, you're taught, you know, certain things about gay people and at to... I don't want to say to the extent that, like, you need to avoid them, but it was also kind of like, okay, I can't be seen with this person or affiliated with them because I don't know what that's going to, like, do for my reputation yeah. type of, yeah. like, stupid shit. Yeah. But it was him I was cool with, and then my homegirl, she actually stayed on the same side of campus as me when I initially stayed there, but she eventually moved to the other side of campus. Actually, she moved before I did. Mm -hmm. And the reason why she left was because she had a roommate, this white girl that played soccer. Cool as fuck. She blindsided my homegirl one day and was like, I'm sorry to do this to you, but my homegirl's got an apartment. I'm out. And their room, when I say their room, they had the best room out of everyone I ever met on campus. Their room was on the 10th floor out of 10 stories. Mm -hmm. And it was huge. It was like a corner room. Mm -hmm. Their room was so huge. It was literally the size of my whole downstairs of my house. It was huge. Mm -hmm. And they was just like, my homegirl was like, I don't want to be put with no random person because that's my bitch. So I got to go. And she ended up rooming with um, uh, someone else I ended up being real cool with. But of course, they were black. Mm -hmm. But um, it was her and gosh, who was the third white person? This is so awkward. I just told this y'all. is so awkward. Wait, no. Who was the third white person? He don't know these people. Uh, so <laughs> it was my roommate. <laughs> don't do that. My roommate, my homegirl's roommate, and um, 
and with somebody else's roommate. It'll come back to you later in life. It will. Because you don't know these people. I don't. But um, just to to piggyback on what you were saying, like, um, about your roommate. Mm-hmm. So, I had, I ended up having two gay roommates. Mm-hmm. Um, and Wait, I only knew about one. I don't think you ever met my very first roommate. We, um, we didn't live together long. Not for any reason. They end up moving our um, dorm or whatever. Oh. But, um... Wait, I'm sorry. I can't just scale over what you just said. They moved your dorm? Child, yeah. So, we moved in in August. By November, we was getting moved. So, I didn't live with her for that long. But we still cool or whatever. (laughs) But, either way, I know, like, my mom was like, well, do you think you need to move rooms? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no. Yeah. I mean, because granted, I feel like in high school, there weren't that many openly gay people. So, Mm -hmm. I I mean, I really wasn't used to being around a lot of gay people, Mm -hmm. but it didn't bother me either. So, I'm almost like, well, do you need to, do we need to request the room change? Mm -hmm. I'm like, no, I'm good. No. Whatever. Um, But that just goes back to what I was saying. Just because everyone looks like you doesn't mean they're the same as you. Yeah. And they can teach you something new you never know. Yeah. My second, no, she's my third. My third roommate, (laughs) we just... So when I moved there first and then she, I was in there and she moved in and she didn't even say nothing to me. I was like, Ugh, okay, this is about to be a mess. So she thought I was stuck up. I thought she was mean and we were just, I was just like, this going to be a long year, but whatever. Next thing I knew, we was in in our beds, Kiki and cracking up the best of friends. Okay, <laughs> you better not be talking about that damn Liz. <laughs> no, not Liz. Who are... Kiki. She, oh. shout out to Kiki. She still braid my hair, and yes, we 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 just knew that we were not gonna work out. And we ended up being the best of friends. We was going on late night missions. And she had a car because she was older than me. We was out. <laughs> we was out, okay? Oh, you know what? Not to cut you off, but my first, um, not my first roommate, the uh, gay roommate I had, he had a car too. And we was out. <laughs> out, like, okay. And you know what? I hope my mom doesn't watch this because I didn't have a license when I first went to ECU because they were just like, no, nah, that costs too much. You just going to keep this permit. So, like, <laughs> why? I used to have to drive us around because he would he would be drunk. And be like, Adam, I want some McDonald's. Can you drive me to McDonald's? And I used to, he had a nice, he had an Acura. I was whipping. (laughs) (laughs) Yo, I used to be out in his act. I swear. (laughs) Anyway, but yeah, that that shit was lit. But anyway. So I think you talked about um, at the beginning, like the difference in, Mm. I guess, the attire or whatever, going to class and stuff. At a Please PWI speak on this. Versus an HBCU. So I feel like it wasn't so much to go into class, it was to go into the calf. Yeah. Okay. Because I didn't care how I look. If I had an 8 o'clock class, I'm going to roll out the bed to go to that class. <laughs> but before I go to that calf for lunch, I'm You're going to show up I'm, and show out. Okay. Because I'm going to walk through and everybody's going to see me walking in this calf. Okay. And Yo. don't let it be Fried Chicken Wednesday. Yo. Don't let it be Fried Chicken Wednesday with the DJ in the back. Okay, we wait, 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 wait. Y'all had the DJ at Fried Chicken Wednesday? Absolutely. And I used to be so we mad. Out. I used to be so mad when I had to have a certain class during lunchtime and I couldn't make it to the calf. Sometimes I would skip class to go to the calf. All right, hold on. <laughs> it should never it was, be that serious. It absolutely was. It was a scene. Every Wednesday, Fried Chicken Wednesday, it was... All, all the soul food you could want and we had a DJ in the calf and it was junk. I bet y'all food was fire too. I mean Okay, wait. What you mean? It was the deep breath. I mean for sometimes me. it was it was good most of the time, but sometimes it was regular regular cafeteria food and we just had to make something shake and, <laughs> <laughs> and heavy on the cereal. <laughs> <laughs> heavy on the cereal or just some fries. Like, you know what? Let nah, me get some fries. No. Nah. So but fried chicken Wednesdays. And surprisingly, the calf, I, from what I remember, the calf used to be pretty dead, like on the weekends, because everybody would just be hungover, just trying to eat. But during them weekdays, people used to be dressed down, okay? Dressed down. Yeah, not so much us <laughs> PWI people. We were the take us as we come type of people. You're lucky we're here today. <laughs> Actually, speaking of attire, I remember, I think, second semester... Um, They implemented, I don't know if this is still a thing, but when I was a freshman, they implemented this thing that they made you get dressed to take your exams because most people would just literally roll out of bed, come in their pajamas, take their exam and go on about their day. But 
it was so many people. I guess like clearly you can look and tell. Did you wash your face today? Did you brush your teeth? Like so they were just like, no, you guys are adults, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's look the, the hygiene for me. Look the part. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they were just like, absolutely not. And they left it up to the professors to even allow you in their classroom. If your attire wasn't up to par, they would kick you out for your final and be like, no, you're not taking this until um, you get dressed and you need to be back by this time in order to even take it. I'm telling you, people changed up their wardrobe real quick. Wow. (laughs) But so clearly we didn't give a damn. Take us as we were. Like we're here for not even a good time, not a long time. We're just here. (laughs) But something else that. Uh, I learned going to HBCU was just the way y'all campus was set up. Maybe just FSU specifically, but I remember the first time y'all came down to visit us at ECU. Remember it was for Halloween? Mm, So for anyone that does not know, anybody in North Carolina that lived here between, again, I would say as far back as like 04 to 2014, Halloween at ECU was serious. It was a big deal. It was a major (laughs) deal. A major deal. I had no... And my sister tried to brief me. She was like, I'm letting you know you need to have your stuff in line when Halloween comes around. I'm like, what does that even mean? Right. And she's like, oh, you'll find out real quick. You'll adapt real quick. Man, my first Halloween was so chaotic. I didn't realize how serious it was until I was off campus with my homeboy and we was like, let's just go to campus to see what the hype is all about. We got to the bus stop. We didn't have no bus It was stops. just, I was going to get there. <laughs> it was only two of us at the bus stop. And then before I knew it, yo, I blinked. It had to be at least 100 plus heads at the bus stop. And clearly all of us are not fitting on the bus. Right. So while the bus came to pick us up, it didn't even stop at our actual stop. It parked down the street and opened the doors. So it was first come, first serve. You had to sprint. We were knees to chest. Oh, and that year, it had to be a smooth 20 degrees outside. Freezing. We're knees to chest to get on this bus. Get on the bus with packed like sardines to be transported um, to the main part of campus. We get to the main part of campus. I've never seen. It literally looked like a festival. Like Coachella. <laughs> like, Not Coachella. But at ECU. <laughs> and I'm pulling up. I'm like, me and my homeboy, like, yo. We get off the bus, yo. The first thing I see, so at the bus area, they had a line of like a never ending line of porta potties. (laughs) We get off the bus, yo. This shorty flipped out of her porta potty. What? I mean, I'm sure y'all had some wild times because I know, like. (sighs) Trust me, I'm getting my ECU people up here too. We're definitely going to have several uh, story times. But. For the sake of this episode, Shorty flipped out the porta potty and she was a cheerleader. Dre- well, that's what her costume was. Oh, I about to say, her so ass she was on out. Purpose? Ass, no, she was drunk. When you said she was a cheerleader, I, I about to say, oh, she's just trying no. to put on a show. No. Okay. And when I say flip out the porta potty, let me actually be more specific. She flipped out the porta potty because sis was so drunk when she tried to step out, she knocked the porta potty over while she was in it. Oh, my gosh. Her girls, oh, girl, you so fucked up. Let me help. Girl, take her home. Home. (laughs) Don't take her nowhere else if it's not her address, please. (laughs) (laughs) So that was literally off the bus a smooth two seconds. That's the first thing we saw. We was like, oh, they different, different out here. So like my sister said, every year after that, we was like, oh, you won't catch us slipping. So when you guys came down, I was living in an apartment by them. So they came and they... They, like I said, everyone in um, NC know ECU is the place to go to for um, for Halloween. So you guys, Panini Press. When we going out? When we going out? We like Daniel. We gotta wait for the. We gotta wait for the bus. All of you bus. I'm like, yeah. Right. Y'all right. like y'all have buses. I'm like, y'all don't. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> we don't like, need them. We, can we walk. don't need them. We can walk <laughs> everywhere. I'm like. School is like 10 minutes from here. Like, what? Y'all like, what? Y'all don't stay right near campus? No. <laughs> and then, also, we was, um, I remember we was drinking liquor on the bus out of a water bottle. Drunk bus. And that's another that difference. I don't know if this is all HBCUs or what, but our school was a dry campus. Mm-hmm. ECU was too. Don't get it twisted. 
Oh, wow. Yeah. That's crazy. I thought we were just allowed to do that. <laughs> you know damn well we could not drink on campus and we weren't even 21. That's crazy. So all, are all schools dry campuses? I'm pretty sure. Oh, wow. So I'm mad because... Well, wait. Hold up. Dry campus. Does that mean even at 21 you can't drink? Yeah. Like, like no. Mm, maybe we weren't. I don't think y'all were. Maybe we weren't. Because I, I think as long as you were 21, you could drink on campus. I remember I was old enough, and so I was living in apartments in UPA, and uh, somebody called the RA on us. The RA came in unexpectedly, and she poured my whole bottle of E&J down the, dr- down the drain. E&J was the equivalent of Hennessy back then. It was a whole bottle of E&J, and she poured it down the drain because we were literally not allowed to have alcohol. Like, no matter what age you were. What did I tell you? I was big mad. Actually, let's dial back. Another difference that she literally just came out and said, I wish ECU would give us RAs. I wish. So, on disclaimer, on campus, yes, you definitely have RAs. Off campus, absolutely not. So, the first time I stayed with my brother um, and we had that kickback or whatever, his RA was cool, though. So, like, he came and was drinking with us. Mm-hmm. But I'm sitting there, like, my brother then was like, yeah, don't be alarmed. Our RA is coming. But he's cool. I'm like, RA? Uh, I'm sorry, what? What does that stand for? <laughs> like, why do y'all have that on? Uh, but your your setup at school was just completely different than ours. Because, like I said, we had to bus to get to and from campus unless you wanted to uh, pay that expensive as uh parking Mm -hmm. excuse me to get on campus or whatever which i was i did but i didn't get the elite one (laughs) i got the i scaled down a few lips Mm. no the elite one is like the highest grade like you can park anywhere i think it's legit called like a1 parking (laughs) parking passes at colleges period are od like like we have money we're all broke as hell i think when I was in law school, I had to pay like three hundred dollars a year to yeah, park. Yeah, sound about central. right. Sound about right. I have to come here. But the thing is, <laughs> even with your parking pass, you need to be careful because depending on Where? your level of yeah. parking, depending on at what times you can park in certain areas. Do you know how many tickets I got? You know how many tickets I ain't paid. Okay, now see, ECU can never because they would definitely hold your degree if you owe. <laughs> but see, that's the thing. See, I left and came back, so somehow that got wiped clean out. But whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So <laughs> you know what? I was not paying them parking tickets. I mean, granted, <laughs> they were about, if I recall correctly, they were about thirty bucks. But that's thirty more dollars than what I had because I was when, broke. I was the brokest form of broke. <laughs> but when you have multiple, that adds up, and I'm not paying it. But speaking of broke, I think PWIs, I'm triggered. So let's not say too much because <laughs> I w- when I say I was broke, <laughs> <laughs> we all were broke. But we had we had money for liquor somehow. How? <laughs> Actually, I could tell you how. So, again, it it really pays off to have older siblings attending the same school as you. So my sister, I used to be like, all right. So, and before I went to college, I never really drank like that. Like I tasted beer and stuff like that, but I never had like hardcore liquor. Right, right. So like my sister, I'm like, yo, me and my people want to uh, turn up tonight, like. What do you suggest? She's like, oh, well, this is what me and my folks drink. Da, 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 da. I'm like, well, how much would that cost? What was it? Oh, my God. <laughs> Tell the people what it was. <laughs> uh, okay, so I think my sister recommended ice. Do you, you remember what ice is? We had it at that kickback. Ugh. That's another story, Tom. It was the peppermint melt joints. Remember oh, at that kick? <laughs> so, ice, it tastes like peppermint. And then... Uh, what else did we get? We actually got like low key name brand stuff though. But did Look, y'all oh wait, start from the I think we got like ninety nine bananas. Oh my gosh. Ninety nine apples. Mm. No, y'all need to start from the bottom. But wait, no, I eventually made my way to Burnett's. Like I What'd dialed back. Oh so my like God. because the only reason why I knew again, I had an older sister that let me know, no, that's not what you want. So. All the liquor I got outside of her was the trash liquor, like mm-hmm. the bottom of the barrel. So like, um, so like with her, I got the, mm, I wouldn't even say it was barely mid grade. 99 ain't that much better than the Burnett's. <laughs> so oh my, my sister is so funny. Cause once we graduated, she was like talking about me and my crew to like her group of friends or whatever. And she was like, uh, like, 
we used to between myself and like the people I was cool with at the time, we used to put our little pennies together. And when she used to pull up, I'm like, "This is it." And it was like a wad of money, and she's right. like, "Y'all, like, what are why y'all?" Why am I paying all one dollar bills? And, right. And she's just like, she's just like, "What do you want?" And I'm like, "Buy whatever I can get with it." And she'll come back with like two, three bottles. It's giving of the me cheap- crackhead vibes. Buy whatever you can get with this. <laughs> it's giving me crackhead. And then eventually. You know, I really doubt that because freshman year was the 99 bananas no, and no, all no, that no, stuff. No. But freshman then, year, you're supposed to start with four locos. But no, <laughs> but see, I had four locos like sophomore year. Oh my gosh. Yeah, freshman year, you're supposed to start with four locos and pass out. That's, that's, <laughs> it's, it's like a freshman rite of passage. You mm-hmm. have to start with the four locos, you have to drink the whole tall can, and you have to pass out. Yeah. It's, it's what you have to Four do. Four Locos basically turned into... Remember when people were strung up on uh, strawberries? Yeah. Oh, my. Ooh. And we were actually out of college by then, so what was we our We really excuse? were. We had no excuse. We had no excuse. Drunk floozies. But that, <laughs> that's, an, that's another story <laughs> for another day. Floozies. We was definitely floozies. For but, sure. <laughs> but um, dang, we're actually almost up on our time or whatever, so... That's wow! Wow, walk down okay. memory lane, right? Okay. Because I, I got a few more things to get off my chest if Do we can. We, we got but, a little time. But like, uh, so uh, something that I will say with the HBU uh, HBCU experience, though, coming from Greenville and coming down <laughs> to Fayetteville, I was like, me and all of our friends from ECU mm-hmm. that used to travel down there from time to time, we used to be like, yo, we could never go there. We would be doing everything but going to class. Because, like, the way that y'all party, like, clearly we party too, but I'm just like, everybody we met, they literally was just like, you instantly became family with them, mm-hmm. like, from day one. As long as you had somebody to vouch for you, and especially, like, with y'all people, like, going through you, my brother, and um, Donzel, it mm-hmm. was like, oh, these y'all folks, say yeah. less, come get this come, bottle. Come on in. Oh, okay. If it was that easy, oh, okay. And just, I feel like, my whole college career would have been downhill from there. <laughs> like, I mean, it was definitely downhill, but the priorities were together, luckily. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, looking back, I don't know how I used to stay up all night to my 8 o'clock class, go to class, and then go to sleep afterwards. But the like, thing that's is, crazy. But the thing is, I feel like, um, on the lowest of keys, I feel like I've always had like insomnia as a kid because I've always been a night owl. So mm-hmm. I would stay up. I still, till this day, stay up to like, three or four in the morning and then turn around and get up first thing in the morning. Granted, now that I'm getting older, it's beating me up <laughs> and right. I need to learn the bedtime and stick to it. But back then, oh, it was nothing. Yeah. Nothing. And then, um, but something else about the, um, the food stuff, right? Mm-hmm. So granted, we too had fried chicken Wednesday. Y'all don't even deserve it. What? But it was fire. Y'all had fried chicken Wednesday? I feel like actually all schools. Y'all got it from us. Y'all stole it. <laughs> Stolen. See, this is why she's a keynote speaker for all. It's, it, yeah, y'all stole it. Y'all ain't think of that. Listen, Fried Chicken Wednesday was the day at either calf had the best food. You said you either, either calf? Either calf. Oh, y'all had, had more. Mm. Wait. Y'all had two calves, so that's y'all, crazy. Y'all had one. We had one. But speaking of calves, which party, which uh, calf? Okay. <laughs> okay. I forgot all about this. That Party so, the calf was I don't even day. know why y'all came down that weekend, to be clear. <laughs> so, one weekend, our FSU fam came up to ECU, and we had a party in our calf. That was actually the black side of campus, which is why be. this makes sense. It, it was be. on the hill. If you know, you know, it was in Tide Don- Dining Hall. So... I think we did have a legit DJ that night, too. Yeah. It was legit. Like, some group um, got approved to throw a party in the calf. So, like, when I say that party went up, it, it was stuck. up and it was stuck. <laughs> it stuck. And then they had still, you know how you have, like, the little drink machines. On the, they left them on. We was in there living, okay? <laughs> Fountain drinks on everybody. Living. Yo, you just took me down memory lane because our Kool-Aid was a fire. <laughs> We was in there the Kool Aid was fire at school. Sweating as hard as we could and going to get a drink from the little the little fountain thing. 
What, what a time so to be wait alive. a minute okay. actually let me dial back to speaking of that same calf so i think like most schools during finals week we would have midnight breakfast mm-hmm, yeah. so one midnight breakfast my raggedy ass friends turned it out they brought they legit brought their stereo and i'll it. never forget jeremiah had just came out with birthday sex <laughs> we are old man <laughs> When I tell y'all, my homegirls was in there DJing the shit out this party, and it was supposed to be like a like a study hall, but you just ate while you yeah, studied. Yeah, we had that too. Nah, we did everything but study in there. That was the most it counterproductive was thing they could have ever thought of. Cause what? That didn't even make no sense. No, it does make sense. We it was just loud. <laughs> Nobody was studying. I felt like for us, it was for you to take a break from studying so you could eat. Like if you up all night. You can have an option to come eat. Because we wasn't studying in there. It was loud. <laughs> Everybody had on pajamas and we talking loud. <laughs> yeah, it was a pajama jam. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it was. And then, you know, we tried to incorporate some things for our good HBCU people. We tried to have a pre-dawn. Uh, mm-hmm. It got shut down very quickly. Everyone got... So, something that they're notorious to do back at ECU, they were pepper spray with no hesitation. Oh, if your tone got a little carry, oh, you was maced. And for anybody that... Kn- I'm triggered by telling this story. <laughs> so the first time I got maced, this is so crazy. So we used to have this club called Gas, and it stood for Grown and Sexy. Are you kidding me? No, I'm What not. is that? <laughs> it was three clubs in one. Where was this? It was in Greenville. I'm going to get to why it's not there anymore. Okay. Uh, gas burnt down my sophomore year. All right. Rest in peace. <laughs> <laughs> so I remember the one of the very first nights I ever went, and gas was $5 to get in. The club, used to, it used you to be $5 it. to get somewhere five, back in the day. Five. Oh and, have, and live your best life for $5. Yeah. You can never today. Well, you pay you 20 to stand there and look cute. Oh, wow. It definitely needs to be five ten dollars max to get in the max. club. Max. So, <laughs> so, I'm in the club, and I'm sitting there tired, ready to go. And all of a sudden, one of, this girl that um, went there with us, she comes sprinting towards us, like, choking. And we're like, girl, you choked on a drink? Like, you're okay? She's like, no, no. And she can't talk. Next thing I knew, my eyes start burning, throat start getting a little itchy. Bruh, I look up, it literally is like hazy all in the club. They didn't mace because two people got in an argument. Bruh, oh my God. whole club shut down. Everyone got to go home. It was it was a mess. And from there, you would think we was immune to mace because they maced us so much. <laughs> it took nothing to get you maced. <laughs> Surprisingly, I only got maced once. <laughs> And it was, it was, I didn't like If you that. haven't been maced in college, did you really go to college? Right. What was your experience? You, you had to live <laughs> off campus or something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can't relate. It was, right. It was, college was a time to be alive wherever you went. Mm-hmm. It was definitely a time to be alive. Yeah. But um, now I'm actually really triggered because now I absolutely have to follow up with this episode and do some college stories because I have way too many. And I need, you know what? I need college stories, and I also need pictures inserted. Do we? Nah, I, I do. don't want to do the pictures. I need pictures inserted. Because think about pre-glow-up days. That's, you're just worried about yourself. I am. Because you'll see on your birthday. When your birthday comes no, around, don't do everybody going to gonna know how you, don't how, do this to how you glue up. Is that even, that ain't you know, even, that's not like even that. a word. Glue? <laughs> glue is a word. <laughs> I mean, not like, <laughs> not like. You mean in the tense yes. you used it <laughs> In the past tense, glue. Uh huh. <laughs> but yes, definitely college stories because, like I said, hold before, the pictures if if I have anything to do with them, please. <laughs> oh my god, we don't look like what we've been through. And thank God, right? Thank God. But what was the moral of our story? A PWIs versus we got so sidetracked. We we completely got sidetracked. And I, but these are our experiences. So, yes, these and, are our experiences. and like I said, if you're really tuning in, you'll realize they're not too far off just because of, like, of us still hanging with our folks, but just at the right. PWI. Right. So, my, so I will say this if you're thinking, oh, I want to go to a PWI because of the diversity and 
X, Y, and Z. I feel like that depends on the person. If you're someone that's open to me mixing and mingling with all sorts of different people, cool. But if you're someone that's just going to stick with your own people that you're typically used to, this ain't the place for you. Right. You might as well go to an HBCU. You might as well. And honestly, like she said, I feel like I can attest to the fact that I feel like people that went to HBCUs have their own uh, sense of community and uplifting, whereas... Yeah, I have this fancy degree, but there, it's so like it's so many of us out yeah. here that I'm not special. Right? They don't give a damn about me. Okay, you went to ECU just yeah. like all the other thousands of folks. Yeah, I show up. I'm like, oh yeah, I went to ECU. They're like, I went to UNC. So I'm like, oh so fuck okay, me then. Right. Back to the interview questions. <laughs> uh, right. <laughs> like they don't care. Right. But yeah, I mean. And I also think, of course, they have pushed this narrative that you'll get a better education at a PWI because, I mean, HBCUs are underfunded. Yeah. Obviously because systematic racism and all that good stuff. Yeah. Aren't, um, I think, aren't all of them private except for, don't quote me on this, but I think A&T is part of UNC system, isn't it? I think that's what my mom was telling me I recently. know Fayetteville is. Oh, Fayetteville really? Fayetteville is, yeah. Okay. Most... I mean, I don't know how many are. I know Shaw is private. Mm-hmm. I think St. August is private, pro- private yeah. too. But I think majority of them are public. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, they're underfunded, yeah. overlooked, all that good Absolutely. stuff. Absolutely. So even, even when it comes to, not to cut you off, even when it comes to like scholarships and stuff, that's mm-hmm. why if you see on the shade room, everyone's like, you guys do know it's more schools out here outside of Howard, Spelman, Morehouse. Like, yeah. do your research. It's <laughs> a lot. And even, I'm not even a big sports fan or anything like that, but I know, I guess they did the NBA draft not too long ago. Oh, yeah. And they were saying how nobody from HBCU got picked. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously. But I know, maybe this was like last year or so, I think uh, a heavy draft pick, whatever they call it, I don't know. <laughs> um, he was saying... He was gonna take his talents to HBCU yeah. because that's what we need to put back in our in our yeah. schools and not go to U, the UNCs and mm-hmm. the all those. Bring your talents back. To yeah, them. but back the, to pig, the, home team. the piggyback off of that too, though, it's actually a lot of HBCUs that like the reputation that they have is kind of overlooked because, like you said, Central is known for its law school, but um, something that I learned back when I was thinking I wanted to be a dentist. Uh, I wanted to go to Howard because Howard is like one of the top dental schools in the country. Mm-hmm. And like when I learned that, I was just like, wait, what? Like Howard, the Howard University. And it's like, yes. And, you know, I learned that from, again, people in our own community that was just like, don't overlook the HBCUs because like home is where it's at. Right. So, yeah, that's my advice for any of you rising seniors that's about to, you know, go off into college, don't overlook your HBCUs. Right. Or or even people that are going back to school, considering going back to school, you, mm-hmm. can, you can still very much so get a good education mm-hmm. at an HBCU. Mm-hmm. And um, I was saying this during my HBCU rant in Costa Rica <laughs> that, I mean, I went to HBCU for law school and I sat and I took the same bar exam as mm-hmm. People that went to Harvard, I was and, waiting for you to say and this. Yale, and all those other places, and I passed it on the first time. Like, just because it's an HBCU doesn't mean that you're not going to get a good education. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean that you won't have the resources that you need. Mm-hmm. Is everything perfect? Absolutely not, because mm-hmm. we got our complaints too. PWIs aren't either. Don't right. get it twisted. Right. <laughs> Everybody got their complaints, but don't overlook the HBCUs because of how society try to brainwash right. us. And that's, that. and that's that on that. On that. On that. That part. <laughs> but uh, now we're officially at our time. This was actually like pretty lit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> time went by really fast. Really fast. Because like I said, I absolutely have to do a follow up to this episode. Maybe not comparing the two, but I absolutely at this point got to pull in my folks to talk about their college experiences. Because college, college absolutely was the best time of my life. At, like, I just I want those days back, back without it, the class. <laughs> exactly. It's, it was the broke fun for me. It was. I, it was the carefree for me. It was the no bills for me. <laughs> like, I, no, I had bills. <laughs> oh, wow, that's crazy. Um, <laughs> like, because you're forgetting at PWIs, those can't, those uh, apartments, you absolutely paid for those. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, ours was across the street. But again, it was low. It was low income housing, though. So my rent was three forty five a month. I wish. <laughs> what? Oh, I would. Yeah, for if, a four bedroom, though. If my Think about it, though. Three forty five. I would be. But no, big. see, you're thinking about it the wrong way because it's for a four bedroom, four bathroom. 
three forty five each. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay. And then you have overages because they give you a certain amount like for utilities and if you go over it, you divide that amount amongst the four of you. Oh no. Nah, so they be jipping they definitely jip you because like you know when we have breaks for instance like winter break, you're home for a month. Mm-hmm. We'll come home and be hit with a two hundred dollar overage charge. How nobody was here, right? That heat should have been off. Off. <laughs> our our um again because we say in the projects it was always something wrong with our stuff. So our AC broke damn near every month. Oh my gosh! I know it was hot. Lord. It was ghetto. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and close out tonight's episode. I really truly hope, especially with this being the tenth episode. I hope you guys were really entertained with our raggedy stories from a PWI and HBCU standpoint. Uh, For those of you, again, that could be tuning in, um, you know, continuing your education on the college. Again, don't negate out your fellow HBCUs. Um, Dang, I was about to say something else, but actually that's the topic I'm going to make for another episode. So I'm going to hold back on that. So that means y'all need to stay tuned. Yeah, stay tuned. Come back every Thursday. Oh, I was definitely, yeah. Come back every Thursday. Or should I give a teaser about what I was going to say? Do it. Okay, so I think, not for my next episode, for one of my next episodes or whatever, to lock out this season. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're doing seasons. Absolutely. Oh, so how many episodes in this season? So for this season, I decided on 15. We're at 10 right now, so we got five more. Okay. And then I'm going to stop and re-up for next season. I'm going to gear back up. Let's see. It's basically, damn, it's about to be June. Yeah, so is you going to come back in the fall or what? Oh, my gosh. (laughs) I was going to say I was coming back in like August. I don't want to stay gone too long. It's like the fall, like like yeah, school. Yeah, mm-hmm. so I'll come back in like August or whatever to start reing up for the second season. But okay. for one of my uh, next topics, speaking of college, I want to talk about if you feel like these days uh, college is even necessary for oh, success. I got a lot to say. Hey, well, if you want that episode, just say that. I I, I have a lot to say. Okay, well. Clearly, you'll see Martisha back within these <laughs> <laughs> next five episodes I have coming up. Because my student loan debt is between the Lord and Joseph Robinette Biden. <laughs> and that's that. <laughs> you know what? Let's go ahead and close this out. Because anytime I think we're getting close to an end, somebody gets triggered and we continue down the path. That should not be explored this year. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and close out tonight's episode. I hope you, again, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, especially if you're new, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe to my channel. And I'm going to put my good Esquire's information down, in, your favorite Esquire's information down in the link um, in the description below. And uh, wait one second. Is there anything else you want to give to people before you leave outside of your student loan debt? No, I'm, I'm good. I'm She's good. giving everything she said had to offer at this point (laughs) (laughs) that's all i have (laughs) okay well with that being said thank you guys for tuning in till next week peace thank you for tuning in to sip on this with a paris about to get lit with these topics drop your thoughts in the comments thanks for the love and your time forget to like comment subscribe without further ado i bring